Безусловно, мы и слушаем фильмы, и музыку, и... Hello everyone, I'd like to invite you in my space trip with Bess Landsrup. Bess Landsrup is the head of, of international project Mars One. This project suggests people to colonize Mars in next decade. Now we are talking about how people can get Mars and try to get many answers on many questions concerning colonization of Mars, abilities, technical advantages within realization of this project. Hello Bess, do you hear me? Oh, excellent! I have a, uh, I have some questions concerning uh, your project and colonization of Mars. First question: Is humanity ready for the flight to Mars? I think that uh, if if we can really do this, if we are successful in doing this, that shows that we were ready to do it. Uh, because it's a very challenging project, it's a very difficult one, there will be a lot of risks, there will be a lot of problems to be solved, and I think that if we can succeed in solving all these problems, then we were, then indeed we are ready to do something like this. Bas, but some people uh, are skeptic about colonization and exploration of Mars because uh, the governments uh, which uh, earlier participate in colonization of Mars, uh, which uh, head uh, of uh, the appropriate programs, I mean Soviet Union and United States, uh, don't support uh, financially this uh, project. And uh, on your opinion, is it obstacles or people can get uh, Mars without uh, this uh, support? Yeah, I think that this that it's possible to support uh, to uh, colonize Mars without the support of states. The, but don't forget that the that the space agencies, uh, all of them in the world, have had a very important contribution to what we are doing now. Because without uh, the Russian space agency and ESA and NASA and all the other space agencies, all the technologies that that we want to use for our mission to Mars, they exist. And this is really because of all the missions that the space agencies have organized in the past. So they have a very important role here. And uh, I, I think that, uh, that it's time for the private sector to pick up where the, uh, where the, uh, where the space agencies have, uh, have uh, ended. Bas, on your opinion, how do you think, uh, do they have the technical abilities uh, um, to fly to Mars uh, and colonization of Red Planet? Well, Mars One is not an aerospace company, uh, and we don't want to build any of the hardware that we need for our mission inside of Mars One. Uh, so what we want to do is ask suppliers from all over the world to build the technology for us. And there are suppliers that have been building the technologies we need, so the rovers and the rockets and the life support systems. Uh, that have been building this for, for decades already for the space agencies. Uh, so uh, I, I, I have visited these companies, uh, I've discussed our plan with their, uh, with their engineers, and they have uh, assured us that what we need, they can build it. And actually just yesterday I had a progress meeting with our, uh, with our, supply, with our uh, supplier Paragon Space Development Corporation who's working on the, uh, the Mars suits and the life support systems, and uh, th there's good progress uh, being made. So I'm, I'm very confident that we can, uh, that we can have the technology for the, the human mission to Mars in time. Bas, you propose to use solar panels on Mars. Uh, is it safe to use uh, during the dust storm? Is you remember um, uh, the example when Soviet Union agency, space agency, uh, noted uh, that in the beginning of uh, 17th uh, uh, was uh, dust storm during one year. Uh, what, th what the sources of uh, energy in this case you suggest? Uh, Mars One is using uh, uh, solar panels for the mission and we have designed the mission such that in the case of a big uh, dust storm uh, then the solar panels still produce enough electricity and we have the reports from the Spirit Rover which was in a very big dust storm so there was uh, dust on the solar panels and there was uh, reduced lighting from the from the sun and uh, 
the, the amount of energy that spirits still produce was something like 19% of the nominal energy. And we are using this, uh, these designs to, uh, to size the, the solar panels. I have a question concerning the obstacles. Do you face with the obstacles during the realization of the project Mars One? And what kind of obstacles uh, you face? I think that our biggest challenge in the, in the near term is uh, financing. So we have to find uh, the finances, especially for our first demonstration mission in 2016. So then we want to land a cargo mission on Mars. And for us to find the finances in time to, to, uh, to realize this mission, this will be our, uh, our biggest challenge. Mm -hmm. and in the medium term, I think it's uh, the actual demonstration mission itself. So demonstrating the landing uh, on Mars with the technology that we don't want to use. And in the long term, I think the biggest challenge will be uh, the, the crews. So the people who are going to Mars to make sure that we select the right teams, who have the right skills and who have the, the ability to function very well together. Does any government uh, support the program and participate in the program? Actually, Mars One, one does not want the involvement of uh, governments in our program. And because we want to be completely independent of any government. We want to make this really a, a mission of, uh, of this planet to Mars. So we want to give everybody a, a fair chance to apply and to become one of the astronauts. And people can apply now on our website. And we want people from all countries to be able to do this. And we don't want to, uh, if we make a connection with one of the governments, then they might want to steer uh, towards getting one of their uh, nationals on board. And we really want this to be a decision of the people of this planet. Uh, but if the uh, Russian government supports uh, your program, are you ready for the collaboration? So, uh, there is of course many opportunities for, co for cooperation with uh, governments, uh, with the Russian government, also with the Dutch government, but they need to understand that uh, the cooperation will not influence uh, what crew we select for our mission. And as long as this is guaranteed, uh, then we are open for such collaborations with, uh, with any government. Science play important role in uh, space missions. You have announced uh, the reality show. How do you think it may harm or reduce scientific goal of the exploration and colonization of Mars? I think actually that uh, the, uh, the fact that we are going to uh, take into account telling this story to the world from the beginning is a very important part of our mission. When the Apollo mission landed on the moon, everybody watched it on TV and nobody had thought about that uh, in advance. And, but it was, I think the biggest influence that the Apollo mission had was actually the images that people have seen on the TV. Uh, also, People, otherwise it would have been a very distant story and now people were very connected to those people on the moon and I think we have the opportunity to really involve the world in this human mission to Mars and create a very a very big sensation of, of uh, success and victory and uh, a, a can-do mentality in, the, in this world and I think that this is at least as valuable as the scientific uh, experiments that we will do but of course our goal is to put humans on Mars and the way that we make this possible is the, uh, the, the stories that we will tell around it. Uh, but the most important thing will still be the mission to Mars, and the people who go there will be very interested in doing all kinds of science on Mars. So I don't see any conflict there. What professions are required for members of the first form? We are we're going to select the, the people in 2015, so people can apply now, but they will finally be selected as full-time employees of Mars One in 2015. So we have seven years to train the people for the human mission to Mars. Uh, and in these seven years, we can teach them all the engineering and medical and botany skills that they need uh, to repair anything, to take care of medical situations, and to grow their own food. Uh, so the, the training of the person is not necessarily that important. What's the most important thing is that the people apply are good at working in groups. 
because we're not sending individuals to Mars, we're sending groups to Mars, international groups, and they need to survive on the planet together. And the group dynamics, so the, the ability of people to function very well in a group, that will be the most important selection, criteri selection criterion. And of course, people have to be, they have to be smart, smart, they have to be able to learn new skills quickly, and they need to be healthy. But the, the, the ability to work in a group is the most important thing. But is it possible to increase uh, the number of the members of the first flight? We'll, we'll send uh, four more people to Mars in the year 2023 and two more people every two years after that. So th there will be an increasing population on the planet. Uh, but the technology uh, that is currently available limits the, uh, the amount of uh, people that we send per year uh, to four. So it's not possible to send more than four people in one year. But my next question concerning uh, human rights. Um, people uh, want to be on Mars, but uh, they will face uh, risks. How do you think, how we can avoid the violation of human rights? And how we can uh, get balance between human rights and risks? A mission to Mars will always be risky. It doesn't matter if we do it in 10 years or in 20 years or in 30 years. When humans go to Mars, it will always be risky. And the people who are going to Mars, uh, they need to understand all these risks. And that's where Mars One's biggest responsibility lies, in explaining all the risks to the people who are going, but also to the audience and to the stakeholders, so to our investors and our sponsors. But finally, the decision to go or not to go needs to be made by the people who go there and they need to understand it's a one-way mission it's a risky mission and they need to understand every single risk and then with, with this knowledge they have to make this decision and this is very comparable to uh, to expeditions to the Mount Everest uh, these are organized by by uh, by organizations by travel organizations and uh, during these, these expeditions to Mount Everest, which is also extremely risky, uh, people die. And uh, this, this is something that, uh, that the people who, who apply for such missions, they know this. And the same will go for a human mission to Mars. It will be very risky. Uh, and the, the applicants will have to make the decision for themselves if, it's, if they think it's worth the risk to go to Mars or if they prefer to stay at home. It will always be safer to stay at home. Is it possible to reduce the duration of the flight to Mars? Uh, with, with current technology, it's, uh, the, the flight will take about seven months, uh, which is comparable to, the, to a trip to the International Space Station, and actually much shorter than some of the uh, trips of Russian uh, cosmonauts uh, to the Mir station. Uh, so uh, I don't think that it's very necessary to reduce the, the travel time, seven months, is uh, something that, that, that has been done many times before. Uh, and if we would have the opportunity to reduce the travel time, I think we would rather bring more supplies to Mars instead of reducing that time. What the plants or animals uh, you are planning uh, to send uh, to Mars with the first colonizers? Well, the, the, the astronauts will try to grow all their food from the start uh, of course, they will have emergency rations in, in case the food production is not going well. Uh, so they will have emergency rations for all of the time that they, uh, that they stay there until the next supply mission. Uh, but they will try to grow as much food as possible. This will be, for instance, uh, yeast uh, or, and, and some, some plants like uh, wheat, tomatoes, uh, onions. Uh, squash is a very uh, efficient uh, plant. Uh, and they will grow, they will try to produce the entire uh, food requirements with these plants. At the same time, they will bring uh, probably from the start uh, insects to Mars for, uh, for consumption, uh, to, uh, because insects can eat the, uh, the, the parts of the plants that humans cannot eat, and mushrooms is also something that we could consider to uh, use the remains of the plants that humans cannot eat. But larger animals, like uh, chickens or, uh, or even bigger than that, it's probably going to take a few years before they come. Bas, my next question may be difficult for you. Um, 
it concerns your expects. As you know, many previous projects of colonization and exploration of Mars uh, were suspended or closed due to different reasons. Uh, absence of financial support, uh, economical crisis uh, were uh, main of the reasons. Do you expect, expect the same situation uh, within your program? Um, I think Mars One has a very good plan for this human mission to Mars. We, I think we are the first company that's designing this mission using only existing technology. Uh, for instance, in the plan of uh, Zubrin, there was still a lot of technology development to be done. And this is, uh, the, our mission is possible with current technology because we are planning a one-way mission to Mars. We have the technology uh, to keep humans alive on Mars and to send them there. We simply don't have the technology to try to bring them from Mars back to Earth. So the technology is there, and I think that Mars One has a very good plan to finance this mission. The, uh, everybody in the world will want to see, uh, see this when it happens, and there's, uh, there's more than enough uh, opportunities for revenues to cover the cost of this mission. So technically and financially it's possible, but it is of course a very complex project, and there are many things that can go wrong. But I have good faith in that we can overcome uh, all these projects and that we have uh, the possibility to really make this happen. But even if we don't succeed in making this happen, I think that we will have a good contribution to future missions to Mars because we will inspire other people to think about a mission to Mars, to consider the, the, the idea of a one-way mission, which will make it much simpler. And maybe if someone sees uh, that, that some, we do something wrong, they can find a better way to do it. So. I think we have a good chance, but even if we are not successful, I think that we can have a very important contribution to going to Mars. Bas, my next question, one of the most uh, interesting questions for many people. It concerns uh, reproduction of human. Is reproduction of human possible on Mars, on your opinion? How do you think? Well, technically we don't, humans don't know if uh, women can get pregnant in 40% gravity. Uh, we, also, uh, we also don't know if the, the baby will develop in the normal way uh, inside the woman uh, in 40% uh, gravity or after birth in, in growing. Uh, but the, it's very likely that, that it will be the case. It's, uh, there have been some animal experiments in the International Space Station which, uh, which indicate this, but it has to be tested very thoroughly before humans should uh, try on Mars. Okay. But I think that we will always find solutions for this problem. So I, I believe that some way we will find a way to, to make it possible to, uh, to have children uh, in, in other places than Earth. Uh, but on Mars, uh, in, the Earth, uh, in our first colony, I think that if there's only four people, uh, it would be very bad uh, timing for those people to try to get uh, children. Bas, thank you very much for the space trip to Mars. I wish you success to exploration and colonization of Mars, to realization of your project, Project of Mars One. Uh,